Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tom Alton, Chair of Construction Excellence in Yorkshire and Humber, and I would like to welcome you to our awards. The CEYH awards are now in their 13th year, and this is the first year we've had to hold them virtually. Our awards have continued to grow each year, and with a record attendance of over 500, year, 500 guests at last year's ceremony. We were hoping to build on that success this year, but the COVID pandemic has had other ideas. Having an original closing date for entries just after the entire country had gone into lockdown was not ideal. So with, uh, with so many people struggling and with staff on furlough, it became apparent that award applications were rightly not on the top of anyone's uh, priority list. We also realised that the physical ceremony would not be able to take place, so we decided to extend the closing date for entries by a couple of months. And this was an excellent decision. I am pleased to announce that it has been another fantastic year with a great number of entries uh, showcasing the diverse range of projects and schemes that have taken place in our region. This year we have had hotels, school projects, university buildings, a town hall, conference centre, playhouse and a market to name but a few. Thank you to all our valued category sponsors and to Esh Construction who are this year's headline sponsor. We could not run these awards without your support, so many thanks to you. We would now like to play a, a video, um, play a video with a message from Stuart Leslie, Divisional Director for Yorkshire and Humber at Esh Construction. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this year's Construction Excellence Awards. Obviously, this year's awards are like no other. However, that makes it even more special that we celebrate one another's achievements this year. And we at Esh Construction are extremely proud to be this year's sponsors. These awards celebrate the excellence across our sectors and demonstrate the talent and determination within our industry and our region to provide the best products we possibly can to our clients. Therefore, during these challenging times, it is even more important and more critical that we celebrate these achievements. Finally, congratulations to all those nominated across all categories this evening. Irrespective of the eventual category winners, you're all winners to us. Please enjoy this evening and hopefully we'll all be back together again next year to celebrate this properly together. Goodbye. Thank you, Stuart. Now, usually we would have a drinks reception sponsored by Interserve, but sadly, we cannot all get together and mingle over a glass of fizz this year. So, but we would like to raise our glasses to you virtually and thank you for your support. Congratulations to all our finalists this evening. We hope you enjoy our online award ceremony. We're really sorry we can't celebrate with you in person this year. But we hope you are celebrating at home anyway. Good luck, everybody. And thanks for all your support. Cheers. Cheers. So obviously I'd like to thank uh, Liz and Donna, otherwise known as the ladies or the event ninjas from the Constructing Excellence team at Leeds Beckett University who've arranged this online event. They work tirelessly each year to make these awards happen and particularly this year in the most difficult times they have shown how committed and passionate they are about these awards and making sure that they still happen during the pandemic. I must also say a big thank you to our team of judges and industry experts. The standards of entries this year has been very high and our judges have had some very difficult decisions to make. I would also like to thank you, the industry and everyone that has entered the awards this year. To make the coveted shortlist and be a finalist is a great achievement and something to be very proud of. In some categories this year, we will also be recognising uh, some highly commended uh, sub uh, submissions. The winners of each category will go on to compete against all the other regions in the national awards next year. Our region has achieved great success at the nationals over the years and we're extremely proud of that fact and we expect more uh, next year. Now, just because we're online does not mean that we have forgotten about the infamous selfie competition. Over the years, the competition has been fierce with guests being very creative with their photos. This year now uh, is now different and we want you to tweet us your pictures and videos showing how you are watching our awards, who you are watching it with, pets are very much encouraged, what you are drinking and if you are wearing something sparkly, we want to see it. If you just sat in your pants, we don't. 
Tweet your selfie using the hashtag CEYH2020, and that's 2020, and there will be a prize for our favourite. We would also like to encourage you to tweet about the winners too. Let's try and get our awards trending on Twitter like we have done in the past. Um, we are proud to uh, announce that the chosen charity for this year's award is the Sioux Rider Wheatfields Hospice. Hospices have played a vital role in the pandemic, providing dignity and a secure uh, space for those at the end of their lives. Like all charities, their fundraising has been hit with shop closures and the cancelling of charity events, so they need our support now more than ever. We would like, uh, now like to live link to Kirsty Christmas to tell us more about the charity and the fantastic work they are doing. Hello there. Um, my name is Kirsty Christmas and I am the Community Fundraising Manager at Sue Ryder Wheatfields Hospice, which is based in Headingley in Leeds. Um, I'd like to say a huge thank you to the organisers of Constructing Excellence Yorkshire and Humber 2020 for choosing Wheatfield Hospice as your charity for this year's very different event. Sue Ryder Wheatfield Hospice um, provides vital expert care to local people from 18 years and above facing a devastating diagnosis of a terminal illness from our 18 bed inpatient unit to our community nursing specialists, to our palliative physiotherapists and occupational therapists and our family support team. We have been here since 1978 to make the lives of all of our patients the very best it can possibly be with the time that they have left. All of our services are free to our patients and their families for as long as they need them. It's a huge misconception that hospices are fully funded by the NHS. Wheatfields alone costs £3.8 million to run every single year. The government funds £1.8 million, leaving Wheatfields to raise £2 million every year. With the arrival of the coronavirus pandemics, all of our charity shops closed, all of our fundraising events were and remain cancelled, and our fundraising income pretty much dried up overnight. It was devastating. Although the response to our emergency appeal was absolutely inspiring from our community, we are left with a fundraising shortfall of £1.1 million this financial year. As we approach the winter and coronavirus cases are expected to escalate, we too expect an increase in the number of people needing end of life care. Whatever it takes, we'll go above and beyond to provide the best possible end of life care for every one of our patients. But we desperately need your help to keep Wheatfield's doors open. A huge thank you to everyone who has already donated. You are so, so kind. And I've just had a look at the total on the Just Giving page. It's gone over 1,300 pounds. Please give as generously as you can. And if you'd like to know more, about how you or your business can support Wheatfield Hospice, please do get in touch. I'd love to speak to you. So it just remains for me to say, have a wonderful event. Good luck to all of the finalists and thank you everyone for supporting Wheatfields, your local hospice. Brilliant, thank you, Kirsty. Um, the Just Giving page has been detailed in the link that's in the chat box, uh, so please do give generously. We would usually raise over £3,000 uh, at our physical ceremonies, so we want to help as much as we can today. You can also find the charity details on our webpage and on the Constructing Excellence blog. Also, if you visited our, visit our dedicated Twitter page, at CExcellenceYH, there you will find the pinned tweet, which just links to the uh, Just Giving page as well. So, now we move on to the awards. Good luck to all those who have been shortlisted. First up is the Integration and Collaborative Working Award. 
The integration and collaborative working award is sponsored by Turner and Townsend and we would like to thank them very much for their support. Collaborative working is central to the core values of constructing excellence and, uh, and our drive to evidence excellence in construction. The judges were looking for entries where collaborative working has delivered outstanding results and significant benefits for the whole supply chain and the partners involved. And now for the shortlist. We have Hull Medical School, York Campus, from Faithful and Gould. British Army Training Unit, Kenya, WYG. Outward Primary Academy, Kirkham Gate, Triton Construction. And Grantley Hall Hotel and Wellness Retreat, Ripon, Lucas Lee Limited. We have a highly commended in this category, which goes to Hull York Medical School, the York campus from Faithful and Gould. And the winner for the Integration and Collaborative Working Award goes to the British Army Training Unit, Kenya, WYG. And here's what our judges had to say about this winning collaborative project. We felt that this was a really challenging project in rural Kenya, with WIG having a team in Kenya and a team in the UK. With the added complications of a local contractor in place to achieve British quality standards and levels of health and safety, we felt WIG integrated themselves well into the team and in, uh, to turn it around. Excellent. The next award is Health, Safety and Wellbeing. The Health, Safety and Wellbeing Award is sponsored by East Riding Infrastructure and Facilities and we would like to thank them very much for their support. Health and safety is of paramount importance and a culture of safety first is crucial to performance. The winner must be able to demonstrate consideration for either project health and safety at pre-construction and or construction phases or an organisational initiative impacting on multiple projects for the workforce. And the shortlist is Henry Boot Construction Limited, InterServe Construction Eye Care and Mental Health First Aid Initiatives, and Simpson from York Limited, Springfield Healthcare, Harrogate Phase One. We have another highly commended here, which goes to Henry Boot Construction. And the winner of the Health and Safety and Wellbeing Award goes to InterServe Construction for eye care and mental health first aid initiatives. And here is what our judges have to say about this winning project. InterServe have put together a sector-leading comprehensive and effective safe, uh, health, safety and wellbeing programme that builds on and improves their already strong proposition around the mental health and wellbeing of their staff and are further supporting these behavioural changes with new specific programmes like eye care and bespoke interactive app technology to facilitate engagement across all demographics within the business. I think we need to teach those judges about punctuation. <laughs> um, the next award is for digital construction. The Digital Construction Award is sponsored by Trimble Solutions UK Limited and we would like to thank them for their support. Technological advances have transformed the world we live in and we have the potential to revolutionise the construction industry. This category rewards organisations, projects and initiatives that have adopted, advanced and achieved excellence in digital construction. And the shortlist is Yorkshire Water Digital Project Management Plan from BIM UK Limited, Area 12 GIS Integrated Area Programme from A1 Plus, and Project Cavendish from Turner and Townsend. And the winner of the Digital Construction Award goes to Area 12 GIS Integrated Area Programme A1 Plus. <laughs> And here is what our judges had to say about this winning digital project. The A1 Plus team have shown how multiple sets of raw data can be transformed into useful information on a tight budget, displayed as an appropriate and powerful way uh, for all stakeholders to create an accessible decision-making tool. Well done. 
Uh, the next award is for innovation. The Innovation Award is sponsored by Faithful and Gould, and we would like to thank them for their support. Innovation is widely recognised as a critical factor for increased and sustained productivity and growth. Judges were looking for an organisation or project that has developed and applied the most innov innovative approach to overcoming one or more construction challenges. Winners may have developed new and different techniques or processes or may have harnessed emerging or existing technologies to create new improved products, tools or services leading to better built outcomes. So the shortlist. Agile, uh, first on the list is Agile in Buildings from Olio, the building performance consultancy. And then we have Smart Asset Management Ecosystem from First Horizon. The winner of the Innovation Award goes to Agile in Buildings from Olio, the building performance consultancy. And here's what I... And here is what our judges had to say about this winning project. The judges were impressed with the results uh, that the entry achieved to help client, uh, the client articulate their thoughts. The entry underlined the fact that the initial stages are vital to the success of the project and giving clients the ability to clearly visualise the end result at an early stage looks to be a really positive development. Uh, our next award is for People Development. The People Development Award is sponsored by the CIOB and we would like to thank them for their support. People are our greatest asset and this award recognises organisations that have really captured the full value of their human resource. Agents for Change, those who proactively cascade education throughout their team and develop highly motivated staff who can make a significant impact on the future of the construction industry. And the shortlist is InterServe Construction, MB Roche and Sons Limited, NG Learning and Development from NG, the East Leeds Orbital Route from Balfour Beatty, and Hobson and Porter. The highly commended goes to NG Learning and Development. And the winner of the People Development Award, and also People's Choice, goes to MV Roche and Sons Limited. And this is what our judges had to say about this winning company. We were all impressed with the way that this local company was investing in the local community through their workforce plan and some really tangible results. Their focus on improving social mobility through targeted investment, support and partnerships was clear to see. Well done. And the next award is Value. The Value Award is sponsored by Knights PLC and we would like to thank them for their support. In this category, judges were looking for an, in, um, an initiative, project or series of projects that has focused on the value of facilities in use and the outcomes for owners and users. Good facilities add value by enabling owners and users to live or work better in them. Winners will demonstrate how the whole life cost and value has been considered from the outset, combining capital costs of construction and maintenance, operational and occupiers costs. And the shortlist is Hull York Medical School, York Campus from InterServe, and the ERL Hornsea Redevelopment from the East Riding of Yorkshire Council. And the winner of the Value Award goes to Hull York Medical School, York Campus. And here is what our judges had to say about this winning value project. InterServe has demonstrated that a limited budget doesn't mean a limited outcome. InterServe delivered value not just to the project, but to the University of York, their supply chain, and to all stakeholders. And our next award is Offsite Construction. The Offsite Construction Award is sponsored by Clarion Solicitors, and we would like to thank them for their support. 
A number of factors are convening to make off-site construction a more attractive solution than ever before. The judges were looking for a systematic approach to the implementation of off-site solutions and tangible benefits delivered by using an off-site approach over and above traditional methods, including value against time, cost and quality. And the shortlist is University Hospital of North Tees Energy Centre from NG Bailey and the Keed B2 SSE Combined Cycle ca Gas Turbine CCGT Power Station from Excite Hargreaves Limited. That's a mouthful. The winner of the off-site award goes to University Hospital of North Tees Energy Centre from NG Bailey. And here is what our judges had to say about this winning off-site construction project. NG Bailey are a very worthy winner of this category, showing a huge amount of understanding for how off-site manufacturing can add much needed value to a complex and time-critical project. Quality was the key to this project, and getting it right first time was clearly a strategy that paid off. The use of BIM was very well thought out, including prefabrication walkthroughs, and more importantly, the management of client assets in the future. Well done. Uh, right, our next award is Conservation and Regeneration. The Conservation and Regeneration Award is sponsored by the School of Built Environment, Engineering and Computing at Leeds Beckett University. And we would like to thank the school for their support. Clients entrust their historic and listed buildings to the construction industry's care for preservation, conservation and rejuvenation. Judges were looking to recognise the achievement of high standards in the repair, reuse and the revitalisation of the region's historic buildings, sites and places. And the shortlist is IBN Scaffold Access Limited, Leeds Town Hall, from IBN Scaffold. Whitby Piers Coast Protection Scheme, uh, Royal Hasken, Haskening DHV. Doncaster Wool Market from Wilmot Dixon. Anglesey Building Society, Burby Junior School, Farrell and Clark. University of Sheffield Engineering, Heart Space from Interserve Construction. Bridlington Town Hall, the East Riding of Yorkshire Council. And the remodelling and refurbishment of a Grade 2 listed Methodist chapel from Fitzwilliam uh, Estate. We have a highly commended in this category, which goes to the IBN Scaffold Access Limited for Leeds Town Hall. And the winner of the Conservation and Regeneration Award goes to Whitby Piers Coast Protection Scheme from Royal Haskening DHB. And here is what our judges had to say about this winning conservation and regeneration project. The Whitby Piers Coast Protection Scheme on look, um, won on looking at all the elements such as how risk was shared, consultation, interpretation, lessons learned and procurement. Um, it is the project that shows the highest level of excellence in our sector, which is fantastic news. Um, but in this, uh, in this category, finally, our judges wanted to give a special mention to the Bridlington Town Hall entry submitted by East Riding of Yorkshire Council, which they considered to be an exceptional scheme. The category had some particularly strong entries this year, making it difficult for our judges, but here's what our judges had to say about Bridlington Town Hall. This is a great lesson as how, how a local authorities can, can, tr can transform their heritage stock to meet contemporary needs. It brought a listed building back into full use with the work being carried out whilst the building was still functioning. Careful restoration and a good looking building adding to Bridlington's townscape. So there we go, just a worthy mention there for Brid. And the next award is Client of the Year. The Client of the Year award is sponsored by Adelshaw, Adelshaw Goddard LLP and we would like to thank them for their support. The industry's customers have an important role to play in transforming the way construction operates. 
how projects come to market has a significant impact on the ability of the construction industry to provide uh, innovative whole life value for money solutions. Judges were looking for a construction client who has been actively involved in enabling the construction program and develop strategies for encouraging and rewarding excellence. The shortlist here goes to is, sorry, Outward Grange Academies Trust, nominated by Triton Construction. Then we have Calderdale and Huddersfield Solutions Limited, nominated by Interserve. And finally, the University of York, nominated by Faithful and Gould. And the winner of the Client of the Year Award goes to Calderdale and Huddersfield Solutions Limited. And here is what our judges had to say about this winning client. The submission outlined that the client set good standards of setting goals for its suppliers and then reviewing things effectively. The judges were impressed by the client's commitment to quality and their desire to embed core values in a demanding environment. The next award is for SME of the Year. The SME of the Year Award is sponsored by Your Hub, and we would like to thank them for their support. SMEs are the backbone of the industry and are recognised for their dominance of and contribution to the supply chain. The Department for Business, Innovation and Skills suggests that 99.9% .9 of UK construction contracting businesses are SMEs, and some of the greatest innovation and best practice can be identified in this sector. I did look up that stat this morning because I wasn't quite sure it was true, but apparently it is, yeah. Um, and the shortlist is Arc Building Solutions Limited and McLeod and Atkin Limited. And the winner of the SME of the Year Award goes to Arc Building Solutions Limited. And here is what our judges had to say about our SME of the year. ARC comes across as being a friendly, forward-thinking organisation in a sector where profits are tight and competition is fierce, while in the face of increased industry and public scrutiny and cynicism, have raised their game and publicised best practice. They have grown their business to show genuine attention to employee well-being and finding interesting ways to develop their products and services in a demanding sector of the industry. Congratulations. The next award is for sustainability. The sustainability award is sponsored by SFS Group, uh, Fastening Technology Limited, and we would like to thank them very much for their support. Sustainable construction aims to meet present day needs for housing, working environments and infrastructure without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs in times to come. Judges were looking for organisations or projects whose achievements in relation to the legacy of their work, uh, leaves, uh, of the work leaves have made a positive impact on society and demonstrated best practice in uh, triple bottom line effects and social value. The winner of the Sustainability Award goes to University of Sheffield Heartspace Engineering, uh, Engineering Heartspace by, from Interserve Construction. Here is what our judges had to say about our sustainability winner. The judges felt there is a special significance in this project which set out not only to restore the historic home of the Civil and Structural Engineering Department uh, buildings, but in doing so brought back to into use an old forgotten cul-de-sac. The result uh, is an engineering tour de force with sustainability, design and practice uh, at its core. The University of Sheffield Heart Space showcases the creative prowess of its architects, engineers and constructors as an exemplar learning touchstone for future student generations. Lessons that will inevitably include aspects of sustainable engineering practice for a team that was evidently conscious of its potential legacy for its student generations to come. Getting through this quite quickly. 
the next award is Project, uh, Project of the Year Civils. Uh, the Civils Project of the Year is award, is award is sponsored by Goss Chalks, and we would like to thank them for their support. The Project of the Year uh, delivers outstanding outcomes for all those involved in a construction project. It showcases the benefits achieved through the application of many of the principles described and in the other award categories. Here is a short list for Civils Project of the Year. Whitby Piers Coast Protection Scheme from Royal Haskening, a DHV. Humber Bridge Hangar Replacement and Testing from the Spencer Group. Anla Bay and East Ella Flood Alleviation Scheme, East Riding of uh, Yorkshire Council. The East Leeds Orbital Route from Balfour Beatty. And Enable Futures CIC and MB Roche and Sons Limited uh, for their stuff. <laughs> the highly commended for Civil's Project of the Year goes to Whitby Piers Coast Protection Scheme from Royal Haskening DHV. And the winner of the Civils Project of the Year goes to Anne Lebee and East Ella Flood Alleviation Scheme by the East Riding of Yorkshire Council. And here is what our judges have to say about our Civils Project of the Year. The success of this scheme is founded in the community, a community collaborative approach to design which emphasis uh, uh, and bio, with emphasis on biodiversity and whole life assessment. This project highlights the challenges built environment teams address due to the plight of our climate and how holistic engagement will facilitate achievement. And our final standard award is for the project of the year buildings. So we now move on to the award for the Project of the Year Buildings, which is always a very strong category, giving our judges some difficult decisions to make each year. The award is sponsored by Innovation Fire, uh, Fire Engineering, and we would like to thank them for their support. And the shortlist is Leeds Playhouse from BAM Construction. The OEC Sheffield Owlerton Events and Conferencing Centre from Harris CM Limited. Moxie Hotel York, Simpson York Limited. The Glassworks Phase 1, Henry Boot Construction. University of Sheffield Engineering Heart Space, Interserve Construction. Grantley Hall Hotel and Wellness Retreat, Ripon, Lucas Lee Limited. And ERL Hornsey Redevelopment from the East Riding of Yorkshire Council. We have a highly commended for building project of the year, which goes to Leeds Playhouse uh, from BAM Construction. And the winner of the building project of the year goes to Moxie Hotel York, Simpson York Limited. And here is what our judges had to say about that uh, building project of the year winner. This was an outstanding winner. On the surface, the Moxie Hotel York appears to be like any other hotel built to a well-versed template. However, looking beneath the external facade, it became clear how much attention to detail went into the development of a building concept that was delivering a rollout program to exceptional quality and sustainability. Quality made possible using the very latest modern methods of construction and sustainability management. Moxie is the latest example of what is a versatile, ma a veritable masterclass in modern construction practice. Wow. So, on to our last award. Our last award is, as it always is, the best of the best. The Best of the Best is sponsored by Yorkshire and Humber Constructing Excellence Club. There were some very strong contenders this year to judge in the Best of the Best category, and the winning project highlights the challenges built environment teams address due to the plight of our climate and how holistic engagement will facilitate achievement. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this year's winner of the Constructing Excellence Yorkshire and Humber, uh, Humber's 2020 award for the best of the best goes to East Ryan of Yorkshire Council for the Anne Le Bee and East Ella Flood Alleviation Scheme. So congratulations to the East Ryan of Yorkshire Council for that one. Blimey. 20 minutes ahead of schedule. I obviously read really fast. Um, right, so that brings us to the end of our awards presentation this evening. Tonight, or this afternoon rather, we have seen some fantastic entries and winners, and I think we can all agree it has been an outstanding year yet again for construction in the Yorkshire and Humber region. I would like to congratulate all our winners, and at this point we would normally invite all our winners to the stage for a photograph. We can't do that this year, obviously, so instead, we would like to show this winner's video. Wow, so amazing. We would like to thank everybody uh, who has donated so generously for this year's charity, the Sue Ryder Wheatfields Hospice. If you didn't get a chance to donate during the ceremony, then we could please ask you to donate after the event. Um, uh, we've got the, uh, the Just Giving page on the screen. Um, the hospice is struggling during this pandemic to raise vital funds, and we really want to help out to support this worthwhile charity. Again, check out the chat box for the, um, for, the, um, for the link to that. We'd also like to thank the team from Big Purple, who you can't see, but I can. Uh, Big Purple Productions for providing the AV and streaming for tonight's awards and doing a fantastic job of... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's weird behind me, it's just green. It's freaking me out. Um, and thanks again to all our sponsors this, uh, this afternoon, this year, including Esh Construction, our headline sponsor, and to everybody who submitted an entry. We couldn't run this event without the support of our sponsors and you, the industry. So take a bow, Yorkshire and Humber, for you've smashed it once again. Uh, finally, we really hope to return to our, our regular events, our physical ceremony next year and be able to celebrate with you all in person. We've assumed that we can, so we have booked Thursday the 15th of July next year, 2021, and we'll be returning to the new dock at the Royal Armouries in Leeds. The awards theme of Mardi Gras has been transferred to next year too, so promises to be an explosion of colour. 
Thank you everybody for joining in today and watching our awards. We hope you uh, all continue to stay safe and well and we look forward to uh, celebrating with you very soon again. Cheerio, bye-bye. <laughs>